The bell rings and the crowd's going nuts. They're chanting, holy shit. We've got one in black, one in white. Uh, and black goes after Cody's knee. He gets a deep half crab and Cody is able to get out of it. And he climbs up the turnbuckle and black just leaps up, kicks Cody off the turnbuckle and he plunges through the table ringside. And this crowd's going nuts. Cody is able to fight back and beat the count, but his knee is wrecked. And as he staggers up, he eats a black mass, crowd cheers, and black stands on Cody's chest in four minutes and 39 seconds and wins. I'm going to get the negative out of the way first, okay? This is all well and good to do this, but you had a golden opportunity to take Malachi Black and go through loss after loss after loss. And then he gets some help and then he goes on a tear. But you blew it by bringing him in. He looks unstoppable. He beats a top star immediately. There's no funny business. Like they make a star in four and a half minutes and you've ruined what could have been just weeks, weeks of fan unrest. And why are they killing this guy? And then you give the people what they had wanted after they no longer care. Other than that, this was brilliant. Yeah, I thought this sucked. Should have been Matt Hardy out here as his first opponent. Use the ropes. Put on the ropes. Malachi Black is upset. Did I make the Obvious. wrong move? Can I hang here? Obvious finish. Building With- stars does not have to be so hard. And, dude, Cody has done it many, many times. Where, dude, you want to make someone? We're putting you over 1,000%. 1,000. There was nothing for Cody here. It was mm-hmm. all about making Malachi Black. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what a great All the stuff about it takes years to make a star and all of this. And then you watch something like this. This is how you introduce someone. And you tell your audience, this is somebody to pay attention to. This is a big deal. This is the debut Aleister Black should have always received from the moment he left NXT. It was just a dominant one-sided win for Malachi Black. And Black is on his way out. He's just smiling. And Tony Schiavone, you can just see the camera as Tony Schiavone is running towards the ring as Cody is like selling the concussed black mask that has just taken his head off. And there's Tony running into the ring to get his exclusive with Cody. And dude, you're looking at the clock. It's like there's six minutes left in the show. What are they going to do here? And the end here, do you have any... Thoughts just on the match before we go to the promo? You know, um, it was, I think, what we love about Aleister Black's style. It was tremendous looking Muay Thai style kicks. I was actually really impressed with a lot of his submission work and his beautiful entries into those submissions. You know, this is, um, I think this is the guy that Undertaker always wanted to be. You know, we know we see the Undertaker. We know he's a huge fan of MMA. We've seen him be called. Sorry, I'm greatest. picturing the Undertaker just trying a black mask with those hips. We, yeah, that's not happening. But if the Undertaker was like 30 years younger, okay, he'd be Aleister Black. He would be want to be promoted as he like Aleister Black is legitimately perhaps the greatest striker in in AEW. Perhaps you could say. You know, you can make an argument for it. Like him doing a Hell's Gate feels so natural. The Undertaker doing it, not as much. Um, so to me, he is like really the next evolution in that style of, of, of like gothic but realistic fighting style type of character. And, and we only got to see a snippet of it here, but it, he looked great doing it. So Cody takes the microphone. He says, legacy is a funny thing. I got into wrestling at 15 and all I wanted to do was win the title they took from Dusty at the Garden. I've had so much fun. Time flies, and dude, he is selling this knee like he never stops with the knee. I thought he was just great here. He shakes Tony's hand. He says, I fired them. They didn't fire me. Then I went out. I met Kenny and the Bucks, and people were laughing when we said that this would be a revolution. Big AEW champ breaks out. He says, this place, this is destination viewing now. We're not an alternative 
We're competition. We set the table, and now it's time for some new people to eat. And my face has been plastered on everything. Maybe there have been some outside interests that have come about. Maybe some infighting among us. But I love all of them. He calls this the AEW Amphitheater. There is no bitterness when I say that I love you all and you made my life special. And he takes off his boot to leave in the ring. And there, where a crutch is laying, Alistair Black, Malachi Black, returns and blasts him with the crutch and takes the boot as Excalibur asks the question if Malachi Black has in fact retired Cody Rhodes as we go off the air. I thought this was just excellent. I thought Cody was great. I thought that they did everything here for Malachi Black. This promo was tremendous. He had this audience for all the negativity people want to give Cody. That's your prerogative. But my God, he had this audience in the palm of his hand here uh, delivering this promo. And it was great. I agree with you. I I really liked it. I I wasn't really sure where they're going when, you know, they were doing the whole thing. Like this needed to be Cody's sort of salmon jacket moment. And I thought he hit those notes really well. You know, and these fans were starting to change. Like the 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 heel maybe t- uh, leaning tendencies of Cody, I don't think is lost on them. And he went into this promo expecting it to be a challenge to have to turn some of these fans to actually care for him again. You had a portion of this audience start to chant na 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 and the rest of them start to shut them down because they realize that they were going to be listening to something important. I thought he crossed a threshold where it went from acting to actually feeling heartfelt and, you know, at least allowing the audience to be able to suspend their disbelief to think, oh, wow, this guy might actually be retiring. Um, you can always count on him to kind of be like that, do, do that rah, rah, we are AEW type of like, you know, great promo. And he used that to his advantage here. It's a great effect. The fans ultimately started chanting no at this guy, you know, at the thought of this man taking his boots off and retiring. Um, but, you know, pulling on your heartstrings, I thought he did a great job. His acting was good. and. It, was it enough to turn him back into a baby face? I don't really think so, especially not in front of maybe a, a less forgiving crowd than maybe, you know, in their home home base of Jacksonville. But nonetheless, I thought it reheated the feud really well. And you couldn't have an excuse for Cody being away for a while now. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't like him, him just being, I mean, he was demolished in this match, but this was more so, um, is he coming back? That's the story you can play up and he can disappear for for a while. Yep. But you have the program to come back to. Uh, And afterwards, uh, they announced to the crowd there that they would be coming back to Daly's Place December 29th. So the last uh, last Wednesday. uh, Is that a Wednesday? Let's double check. That's the last Wednesday of the year. Cool. So there you go. That was that was homecoming before they're back on the road in Pittsburgh. Uh, You know, overall, I thought it was a a solid show, maybe a step down from previous weeks, but. Um, I can't really say like there were any must see matches coming out of this particular episode. And that includes the labor of Jericho match that includes even the main event. But of course you should watch the main event simply because of the excellent booking. It, I really wouldn't have, even if it meant a five-star match between these two, I think this was better in the long run for Alice, uh, Malachi Black. The Cody thing is certainly interesting at the end. So, um, a worthwhile episode is always, I would say. I think that, you know, the last. 15 minutes, and a, a, in particular, just seeing Malachi Black handed, handled that way. Like, I honestly believe like that is the is just such a huge part, I think, of fandom is seeing new stars created and adding new characters to to your big mix. And it's it's a different comparison, but you know, on, on Saturday night for that Bellator show, like if you have been following AJ McKee's career, like here's a guy who makes his pro debut in Bellator and by, you know, this, you cannot control the outcomes. And he had to go out there and win fight after fight, after fight, after fight, he's undefeated, goes to this Grand Prix and he's facing legit, like the best fighter in Bellator history. And he beats this guy in less than two minutes. It was such an incredible moment, not just because it's a great story. It was the crowning of a guy that feels, number one, he is the biggest star in Bellator today. And he is feels like one of the biggest stars 
in MMA within reason, because he is not a guy that is, is going to be your, your, you know, at the level of your biggest UFC draws, but like those kinds of moments, I think is what just so re-energizes your audience when they see new stars created. Like that is, that is what the industry is built on. And I think it's frustrating for a lot when fans are behind certain talents and, and they see a Karrion Cross or they see a Keith Lee and it's just, you see something like this and you realize it, it does not have to be so complicated. Like, yes, you have to do weekly television and that's a big task that I think we don't always give enough sympathy towards, but at its core, th- this does not have to be as complicated as, as it is often made out to be. I look forward to the day where, you know, um, in this line of analysis, we no longer have to set the bar so low that we have to constantly like applaud maybe basic logical things like pushing a guy strong on his in his debut match um that's what it's gotten to yeah like we you know we constantly make these references because we continue to see it being done uh, in a way that is completely inefficient and completely wasteful of the tremendous resources that you know um that are available to to these companies and so um i again i look forward to to that time when we can really kind of create this among you know like other high quality works that are out there in entertainment. And it goes, and it goes for two. Like it's, yes, it's, um, it's the direction that you, you push this to. It's also like having a Cody Rhodes on board. Like yep, you could not ask more of somebody to go out there and just be destroyed in four and a half minutes for the idea of creating an opponent for himself. Like, I think he sees that, that big picture and he's done it multiple times. Yeah. Um, at this point, really, he is untouchable. Um, I think he is so ingrained into the DNA of, of AEW and he's a very good speaker that I think he, you know, like him being away and coming back will immediately kind of refresh that stock. People will kind of forget about a loss like this and they'll see his next match as a big match. Um, and he's, I think, very smart with his, you know, with that value. 